All right, everybody, welcome back. So I've seen a lot of comments in a lot of places calling for the R73 for the MiG-29 and the USSR in general. Now the Python 3 and the Ainman L are here and a lot of misinformation floating around as well. So I figure it's probably time to address the issue and no, the R73 is not needed for the MiG-29 yet. It's still too early. We will be getting the R73 on the new SE-25 and I think this is a good way to test the missile. But for now, it's still too early to come on fighters, and especially the MiG-29. So, for the current state of things, yes, the R-60M is a weaker missile than the aim l or the Python-3. There is no denying that. The biggest issue is the range of the missile, which is much less than either the aim l or the Python-3. It also has a less sensitive seeker head and is much more easily flared, as the field of view of the missile is 5 degrees compared to the 3.6 of the aim l or the Python-3. I'm not trying to say the R60M is equal or that they're great missiles, but the R60M is adequate and it does have its own advantages. It accelerates and it pulls hard off the rail, being faster to accelerate than the 9L and not taking nearly as long to start pulling as the Python 3. As a dogfight missile, it does the job well enough, and to be honest, the 9L and the Python 3 are easily one player in most situations these days anyways, just like the R60. The dogfight performance of the R60M, plus the fact that the Midway 9 and the Yak of HMD, which allows you to simply look at the plane you want to lock, means that you have a serviceable, even if not stellar, missile. That also completely ignores the fact that, at the same time, the MiG-29 and the Yak-141 have access to the best radar missile in the game by a long shot, the R-27ER, which has much better range, speed, turning capability, and also a much better seeker head in the AIM-7 FRM. This also fits nicely into Gaish's preferred balancing strat, when one side has better IR missiles and one side has better radar missiles. So think F-4J versus MiG-23. The Soviets had superior flight performance in IR missiles, while the Americans had four M7Fs, which gave them the advantage in longer range engagements. Only this time, the Russians also have superior flight performance, since the MiG-29 is superior in most aspects of flight performance to every other jet in the game. The only plane that can reliably beat in a dogfight with equal pilots is the F-16, with its superior low-speed turn. But in most cases, in a typical ARB game, the high-speed pull and the overall agility of the MiG-29 makes it a better platform since if you get slow enough to abuse the F-16's low-speed agility, you're also making yourself a very easy target to get third party. The F-16 is great in a 1v1, it's not nearly as good as the MiG-29 when it comes to actually doing damage to multiple enemies in your typical ARB scenario. Still great, don't get me wrong, but you can't throw the plane around like you can with the MiG. The MiG-29 still takes the crown as the best play in the game, in my opinion, at least for ARB. Even with the R60Ms, even if you disagree and the F-14B or the F-16 is the best, it's still a very close second, and it's incredibly strong either way. Now let's get to the R73. So to recap, comparing the 9L and the R60M, the AIM-9L has a bit better flare resistance and much better range. In exchange, the R60M accelerates better and is much more agile in close quarters, performing better in a dogfight scenario. The R73 is a whole other beast. Compared to the aim l the R-73 is ever so slightly slower to accelerate with a slightly worse, and I mean by like 2%, thrust away ratio. It makes up for this, however, with an extra 0.2 seconds of burr time on the motor. This will more than rectify the range issues the R-60M has, and in most cases, the R-73 will have just as much range as the aim l Theoretically, it does have less range as the missile explodes after 25 seconds, unlike the minute of the Sidewinder, and it also has more drag. But in most practical cases, in an actual match, they're going to have equivalent range. Now, in combination with that fact, they have equalish range. Unlike the aim l the R-73 has thrust vectoring. This means that it doesn't have to deal with low speed fin affecting this problem experienced by more traditional missiles, and drastically increases maneuverability off the rails. This lets the missile pull some absolutely insane shots that no other missile is capable of currently especially since the low-speed controllability issues the R-73 had were also fixed. The missile is almost capable of hitting targets behind it, especially when fired slow, but even in general, the maneuverability of the R-73 is unmatched by any missile in the game currently. All of that would be fine as long as the missile was easy to flare. I was completely fine with the Python 3 coming to the game, even though it outperformed the aim in most scenarios, because it wasn't difficult to flare. However, do y'all remember when the aim l had super cracked flare resistance? Bear with me while I explain a bit of how missiles work in War Thunder. At that time, the aim l had a 1 to 1 ratio on range bend 0 and 2, plus a 2.5 degree field of view for the seeker head. 
Range Band 0 is non-afterburning plane sensitivity, and 2 is flare sensitivity. Having a 1 to 1 ratio means the missile is just as sensitive to the plane as it is to flares, and a smaller field of view means the missile is less likely to see flares when dropped. The 9L had a nerf field of view to 3.6 a few patches ago, which is why it's so much easier to flare these days. It simply sees more flares than it used to. Well, the R73 is going to be even more difficult to flare than the 9L used to be. Not quite as hard as a rear aspect R27 Pre, but pretty difficult in either case. Although the field of view will seem large at 4.5 degrees when you're about to launch it, that's deceptive. The R73 has something called gate width. Once the missile drops off the rail, that 4.5 field of view drops to 1.5. That's not quite as narrow as the 1.4 of the R27T, but it's pretty close and is certainly much better than any other missile in game currently. For comparison, the Magic 2, which is currently the most flare resistant short range missile, that has a 2.5 degree field of view, and the 9L or the Python 3 have a 3.6. Given these, the Big 9, which already has the best radar missiles and arguably the best flight performance, will make the plane incredibly strong and unbalanced, and the game is not ready for this yet at all. If Gaijin decided to compromise and then remove gate width from the R73 for the time being, until more advanced missiles such as the AIM and M were added to the game, I would be 100% okay with that. I'm totally fine with sacrificing a bit of historical accuracy for gameplay, especially since it would be nice if the Big 9 had better IR missiles, as long as they didn't, you know, absolutely ruin the entire game. As it stands though, we don't need a missile that has aim man l range, 40G, thrust vectoring maneuverability, and crack flare resistance on top of that on any fighter, especially the Big 9 I think Gaijin's solution of adding them on the SC-25BM for now is a good choice, as it will still see top tier every game, since 11.3 basically never gets down tiers, and is on a subsonic attacker, which you can just run away from in all top tier fighters if need be. I do also want to add a little disclaimer, they could always change this missile before the SC-25BM is actually available to the public, and flare rejection doesn't always seem to play out according to the stats, but everything else of the day should be accurate, as long as nothing changes. I do have a feeling the missile will come to fighters later this year to get more advanced missiles. For example, I think Griffin is almost certainly coming with AMRAM late this year, most likely December. But let's not rush it for now, shall we? Hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch y'all next time. So, peace, y'all.